All right, guys, I'm back. I'm here today because I'm a huge Plex fan, and I just can't stand not having my metadata backed up with all my collections and stuff I make for all my Blu-rays that I buy. I just cannot have them. I don't want to do it again. Otherwise, I just won't do it again if it's not backed up. I've looked everywhere for it. And now, since they released the new MyCloud OS 5, uh, there's a different way of doing it, and if you don't know how to do it the original way, well, this will help you too, and gives you kind of sense where everything's located at. So basically, this update, what I'm going to be doing it on is on my cloud uh, that has been upgraded to the OS 5, the new Western Digital uh, operating system that they're putting out for all their certain cloud devices. So these are the ones right here that this will pertain to. So I don't know about these ones, but I know it'll pertain to all these ones right here. So all the MyCloud Ultra, EX2, uh, EX4100, PR2100, and PR4100, and so on. So I know those will all work flawlessly. So first of all, what you're going to have to do is you're going to want to go to your cloud. It's on right here. This is the cloud right here. So you log into your interface. You're gonna do your IP address. So mine is. I'll just show you. You just you know, my other cloud right here. I'll just go. Oops. Oops. Wrong thing. So then it would log into your cloud. It would bring you up to your page. You'd log in, put your password in. But we're not doing it on this cloud right now. So we're doing it on this one. You go over to your settings tab. You're going to want to click your settings tab. Then you're going to want to go to your um, networking. And you're going to want to go down to SSH. And we're going to actually go into the cloud itself um, so that we can grab our data back. Because it would be cool if it had a button to do it for all the devices. Plex, that would be awesome. Put that in the thing. That would be amazing. A backup and restore. Ooh, that would, I mean, that would make everybody happy on every platform from Windows to Mac to uh, Synology to, uh, uh, I mean, all the different RAID server configurations, everything would be just, oh, it'd be so simple. All right, so what you got to do is we got to turn SSH on. You turn your SSH on, accept the terms. It's just saying, you know, you can damage it when you go into this. You just got to make sure you know what you're doing, but I'll walk you through. So then it's updating right now. So now we're going to go to configure. Put a password in there. I'm just going to do one, one, two, three. And I'm just going to do one, two, three. And, oh, we'll do, oh, I'll do, oh, four. That's right. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, four, five. I think I should do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, gotcha. We'll just do this then. Bash. V A S H eighty seven eighty seven. Um we'll go bash eighty seven thirty two thirty two. Bash eighty seven thirty two. So we got that in there now. We're gonna we're, and now the second step is what you need to do, and it's important because it could screw everything up and it could just make it take a lot longer than what you need. Um, is you want to go to your apps. You want to go to your Plex, and you're going to want to turn it off. I'm leaving this running right now because my daughter is watching a movie, and it would make her upset if it turned off. So I'm going to keep it running. But you would turn this off in the whole process. I know you have to let users know if there's anybody watching it. It's going to cut their movie off. Unless the streams are really quick, they might be able to finish it, but just be prepared that it might cut them off and might get them out. So they might be upset about that. So then the next step is what you're going to do is you're going to want to get uh, a program to log in SSH. Uh, WinSCP is really good. It's free. It's free from the main page. I'm with my firewall right now. I have it blocked, but uh, SourceForge is working great. So just get. I'll just show you right now on this. It's the same program. They're free on both. Just type in WinSCP from uh, Google. It'll come up the first page, legit site, go to it. Or you can go to the Forge website as I'm doing it now and get it too. So once you have it installed, you're going to want to go to uh, bring it up. It's going to load up like this. And it's going to ask you, let me bring all this over here. There you go. So it's going to ask you your host name. So your host name is the IP address of your uh, server. Whatever I use to type in up here at the top bar. 
So mine is 192.168.1.187. So now, username, here it's the same with all of them. It's just SSHD. And then the password is that password that we created. So the username, doesn't matter what it is, what NAS uh, for the WD you've created or whatever, it's always going to be SSHD, but the password is going to be the one which we created in the cloud itself. So that'll be VA Vash 8732. I'm going to hit login. There it goes. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go over here, the root. It's going to show it's empty. You're going to be, oh, what the heck? It's not working. You're going to get frustrated. Just depends. I like to hit, let's see here. There we go. Hit the top root. So you're going to hit this and then make sure it's the top root. Then this is where it changes. So you're going to want to find, scroll down until you see the MIT Mint folder right there. MNT folder. Click that. You're going to want to go to HD. Then you're going to want to go to HDA2. Then where it's changed, you want to go to the NAS Prog. Go into there. And there it is. The Plex Config. Click that. Then you can back up the media server. See, you got your metadata, all the built-in plugins and codecs and everything. So the cool thing is, this is the server that you, this is the part you need to back up. So this is what all your metadata is. So you can go to, let's say I have another drive on here. I could just drag this over onto any drive in my directory and uh, it'll do all my data and back it up. And it doesn't matter, it takes a while. I have six gigs worth of this, and that should be nothing for my network. That should be nothing. But it takes maybe like 20 minutes or something on my network. So be prepared to let the users know you're gonna be down for a while while it's working. And then once you have it backed up, you have it backed up. And the only thing you have to do is go, uh, if, if your server dies or you get a new drive, Make sure everything's configured as in your folders and all your movies, your shows, or, or your music is configured the same. And then all you have to do is go back into NAS Prolog and then uh, Plex Config. So if we go to, we're in the Plex Config right now, you, you would, or if there's no Plex Config, you can back up from NAS Prolog, just back up this whole file right here. So this is the main file you can just back up. And then you throw this that Plex config file back in here. And you want to do that before you install, um, if it's a new server, like if, if you, your server like totally crashed and you got a new one, you would um, install the Plex app on the server after you've already done this. So you would do this first, then you would install that and your stuff would be back. But if the drive just died, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't have to do that. I mean, oh, and if, only if the drive died, you'd have to do that. Sorry for uh, what I was talking about. This is just for a backup, but if you mess up something on your server, just put it back in here. Make sure you don't touch anything else because you can mess up something. And I don't think there's a way online even to look to figure out. I mean, you can mess stuff up. So I'm just going to close this connection right here. Let's just see here. I will go to. Um, Local, yep, filters, perfect. Change, yep, perfect. So you just close this out. Yes, so let's go. Okay, fine, terminated, we're good. So that's what I would do to back up your Plex metadata. I mean, I love Plex. I think it's a great service. I use it all the time. But I love knowing my stuff is backed up. And I spent hours and hours and hours and hours doing the collections and the meta. Data, some movies they put in don't always match up, and I don't want to have to look for it again, so I just want to relax and not have to worry about it. And I'm sure everyone else will feel better knowing they're backed up, too. And I have two PR4100s, and no problems whatsoever. I have upgraded them, though. I have uh, 16 gigs of RAM in both of them. Uh, and I also put um, West, uh, Corsair ML fans in them, the non-RGB ones in them, too. Uh, and I also put uh, Thermal Grizzly Thermal Paste on the CPU, um, uh, Crynot on the CPU. So, but yeah, that's enough. Rock out, guys. Have a great rock and rolling day, and I hope to guys see you guys in the next video. Please like, please comment, and please subscribe and hit that bell icon for all the new notifications and all the new videos that I put up. I'm going to try to put one up every week.
Peace out, guys, and have a rock and rolling day, and stay true, and have fun with your families, and you know what? Just love life. Peace out, guys.